Howdy y'all. Today we're going to fit a Jowo number 6 nib to a section. We're going to need a Jowo tap, an M10 by 1 die, a small center drill, a 7 millimeter drill bit, a letter N drill bit, and a letter R drill bit. We're going to do this on the metal lathe today. Uh, this can easily be done on a wood lathe by manually cutting tenons. So without further ado, here we go. First thing we're going to do is mark the tenon length. And for that, I'm going to grab my calipers. We're going to set it to 10 millimeters. And go ahead and scratch the surface. little correction the scratch on the tenon is 5 sixteenths of an inch long I'm now setting the diameter to 10 millimeters so we can check our progress so once I set it to 10 millimeters I'll zero out the calipers and I'll take a measurement that will tell me how much material I have to remove. Now we're just going to start taking passes. and we just kind of nibble away at the material again checking off and to see how much more I have to remove We should be at about the last pass. Alright, we're going to switch tools here. And this is a relief tool. This will let me cut or groove at the end of the tenon. So as we're threading on the tenon, we have a stopping point.
and now we're going to face the end of the tannin and chamfer the edges to allow the die to slide on a little easier. Alright, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut the threads. So I have my die and the tailstock die holder. Add a little lubrication. And this is some thread cutting oil. You can use cooking spray. You can use WD-40. Um, you just need a little something to help. We're not cutting anything very abrasive. I mean, we're cutting resin. Clear out the shavings a little bit. always work the dive back and forth. It helps clear out the shavings that just roll around. We run it all the way up to the shoulder. That relief groove, uh, when you take the die off, shouldn't have any threads in it. And we're checking the fit by threading the body onto the tan. And we're going to turn the. It, it may have a slight wobble to it, um, but it should be stopped true. That's about as true as you get. We're going to use our small center drill and we're going to put a starter hole in the end of the tank. And we're going to cut up our 7 millimeter bit. And we're going to cut a through hole. WD-40 for a lubricant. And we're going to 
move the drill in and remove it frequently. Clear away all the swarf and make sure things stay cool. Douse the, the hole in the die with the lubricant in between. Some resins don't tolerate heat well at all. I've melted alumilite by drilling too fast and not keeping it cool. Okay, we're going to pull the section out, flip it around. Clean it off a little bit. That lubricant goes through the hole and kind of surrounds the section. I'm going to load up the facing tool. We want the, f the front of that section really flat. And again, if you don't have the metal lathe, this can be done on a wood leaf. You could just use a, a carbide or a skew to do what I just did there. We're going to check up a letter N bit. And we're going to drill in 0.58 inches. And that's going to be from the shoulder of the drill bit, not the point. You'll see me double checking here the measurement. I actually mark a line uh, with a sharpie on the drill bit. So there's already a line there. We're going to check it and then you'll see me grab a nib and we're going to measure the distance from the lip of the housing to the start of the threads. And you want to measure in a couple threads. Um, because remember, as you screw that housing in, uh, the wider part of the housing is going to sink in. Going to grab a nib. Now I try to show you what the measurement is in the camera. It's not working out so well. Um, light reflecting off it quite a bit but you can see where the pointers of the veneer were and again from that first flat line that I showed the drill bit it's five eight
do this in one pass. Now we're going to switch to the R bit. And the R bit is used to countersink the lip of the housing. We're just going to kiss the inside of that hole. It's about 3 30 seconds of an inch deep. And the reason I do this, some makers leave the nib housing proud. I don't like the look personally. I think it looks more finished and more refined if the lip is countersunk. Or at least flush. So that's 0.923, something like that. It's 3.30 seconds of range. And that's it. Last step is going to be to actually thread the 7 millimeter through hole. For number six, Joe O, uh, as in the intro, the tap is M7.4 by 0.5. Little WD-40 for a lubricant. We're gonna slide in through the end hole and start tapping the seven millimeter hole. We're gonna go in about a quarter of an inch. You can go deeper if you want, but there really isn't a need. Now I keep some long Q-tips around, Q-tips that is. Um, we're going to dip them in denatured alcohol and then we're going to swab the inside of the section just to clear out some of that oil. And we'll all might as well clean up part of the lathe. Now for the moment of truth. I'm going to grab a nib. See if it fits. Look at that. Well, let's get to fitting this thing. Um, I'm going to take it out of the car and give you a close up. And then we'll screw it into the body. And that's really about it. That's a little blurry, but you see how flush the nib is. It gives it a very refined look. I want to thank everybody for taking about 20 minutes and watching this. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks for your time.